how to maintain well-being while working in a fast-paced technological startup environment. Hi, my name is Aya, and today I am at the next web conference here in Valencia. Every year for the past 16 years, TMW Conference gathers over 10,000 industry executives and tech startups to explore the impact of technology on different industries. Now it's happening here in Valencia. Also, today I would like to explore and speak with other conference attendees about the impact of technology on well-being. Let's go! Well, before I talk to the other conference attendees and Mirte, CEO of TNW, let me share a few thoughts about the event itself. This year, the next web took place in the lovely port of Valencia. Valencia has become a popular spot for digital nomads and entrepreneurs because it has everything. Good weather, delicious food, friendly people and a growing startup community. It's a great place to enjoy a wonderful lifestyle. More about the startup ecosystem in Valencia you can find in this video. The event organizers aim to create a festival-like atmosphere and I'd say it worked out perfectly. There was plenty of room to eat and socialize with others in a comfortable setting. Also, the Ferris wheel provided a wonderful opportunity to not only enjoy a bird's eye view of Valencia, but also on wind and have fun. In my opinion, everything was well planned and organized. At least, I didn't encounter any issues. I often attend events. And for me personally, as a participant, it's crucial that events are well organized with all the details taken care of. That's precisely how this event felt to me. Additionally, I found the conference app to be useful as it helped me connect with interesting people. I also liked the constant notifications that helped me not to miss important events at the conference. Let's talk more about the organization with Mirte, CEO of TNW. My name is Mirte van der Erve and I'm the CEO of The Next Web. So we're a company, a media company that's focused on tech and we organize a big conference in Amsterdam for already 16 years and we also do some other things so we have some online tech news we have an open innovation programs and we also have co-working spaces and for the first time this year we're organizing TNW Valencia so uh, we are very excited about that that's great so my first question is why Valencia why did you decide to do this here yeah so that's an interesting question because it's, I've been asked that question a lot of times in the last couple of days and for us it's very clear in Amsterdam we've been there for 16 years and what we've seen in Amsterdam that we've had a quite an important role in in growing the tech ecosystem and this is something that we really that is also our purpose to connect the tech ecosystem and to make it thrive so especially when you look at a stage of growth of an ecosystem you notice that it's you need international connections at a certain time to make it successful, to get in the right investment, you know, to get in the right attention, to get the right talent, uh, things like that. So um, what we saw is that, especially in tier two cities, so not in like, for example, the Barcelona and Madrid, but in Valencia, it's like the third city of Spain. There is a, a nice traction, a nice ecosystem, very healthy ecosystem, a lot of health and well-being, for example, as well and there's around 1,100 startups, and the momentum seems to be really good. They're all very collaborative, they work together, and apart from that, they have a government that is very involved in their success and really wants to contribute to that success. So, um, yeah, for us, it was the perfect combination of, of you know, a, 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 an ecosystem that's already there and the right momentum to grow. So we will see uh, well, in, uh, this conference in Valencia next year? Yes, well, we're planning we're planning to do it exactly for next year and the year after as well. We always want to do something on a continuous basis because if you do a one-off, you know, it's nice, but you really want to build it out over three years. And also working together with the ecosystem to have that continuous conversation throughout the year. So to work with Valencia Digital Summit, for example, that takes place in, in, in October. Mm -hmm. That is more of an internal conference, but seeing how can we build bridges, you know, across different events and across the ecosystem during the year. And yesterday I talked with some of the attendees and... Uh, all of them are happy participating yeah. here. Yeah, well, good. Well, that's good to hear. I'm happy to hear that as well. And it's always, you know, you're always a bit nervous. You know, is everyone having a good time? Is everyone getting good enough connections out of it? But yeah, that is what really, you know, makes me the happiest of all to see, you know, that people are happy and really experiencing this in the best way. 
Yeah, so in my opinion, everything looks pretty well organized. Yeah. How did you manage to do that? Well, you know, I say have to say thank you to my team because you know I'm not the event organizer myself. My team, I have a lot of great professionals who very well know who know very well how to organize an event, and they have a, yeah meticulous planning and uh, yeah it's a lot of coordination. So yeah, we have our team of about 20 people that came over from from the Netherlands that are also here. Yeah. yeah so thanks to the whole team. Exactly. And what were some of the challenges you faced organizing this event? Well, one of the challenges that we had is that um, uh, it's quite windy now, as you as you see as well. Is that in the marina it can get quite windy? So and of course our event, as you can see in the background, is all outside, or it's at least it's under a market hall. Uh, so we need to be prepared. We had to be prepared for every kind of weather, even though there are 300 days of sun in Valencia uh, with the wind. The booths, you know, need to need to have need to be steady enough. So that, of course, you know, we need to fill them with sand, and there needed to be um, there, we needed to put some extra money into that. So yeah, that's you know, never then never, never what you like when things go out of plan. But yeah, I think that's uh, that's it. And I think apart from that, yeah, the challenge is uh, is you know it's a first year event, so people a lot of people want to see it first to believe it. And then you know maybe maybe participate. So that, that's mm -hmm. why we think that next year is uh, yeah it's going to be uh, even even better. Yes, I believe too. So and uh, what are some rewarding aspects while organizing this event? Well, there are so many rewarding aspects. I mean, it's, again, you know, it's always it's it's it, it is those connections. I think yesterday there were four thousand meetings that were in there, three or four thousand meetings that were recorded in the app. So that's. I think alone is statistics that really really made me happy. Um, my founder or the founder of our company, Boris, he also told me that he was he was investing in a startup and he um, he was like, yeah, you know, the startup wasn't going really well and it's great technology, but their marketing is just lacking. And then he just ran into someone yesterday to uh, from Philips who is actually looking for technology like that and he said wow okay this could be super interesting so it's those kind of connections you know mm -hmm. that really you know bring startups to the next level that's what really makes me happy and it's those stories as well you know the stories really stand out mm -hmm. yeah the connections is uh, the most important thing and the, these kind of events help yeah. startups get them Okay, thank you very much and see you uh, next year in Valencia. Yeah. <laughs> all in all, I really enjoyed the event, but there is one important point to note. I had a specific plan of what I wanted to do and what to achieve. This is crucial when attending any event. Such events have high energy and things happen quickly. Without a plan, it's easy to get overwhelmed with information and leave feeling drained. So my advice is to always have a clear idea of why you are attending events and what you want to achieve. This can make a significant difference in the outcome. Now let's get back to the main topic. Technology has revolutionized many aspects of our life. It's growing exponentially. The benefits are genuinely incredible, but what about health and well-being? Does it really help us improve? And I'm not talking about a new health innovation that solves a particular problem. That's really cool. I'm talking in general about the use of technology in our everyday life. One of the conference topics this year in Valencia was a sustainable society. And I believe that a crucial aspect of achieving sustainability is health. Because a healthy society can be more productive, improve well-being and achieve better results. Let's speak with other conference attendees and ask them what they think about it. Yeah, so tell us more about yourself and what you do. Yeah, sure. Um, so I do uh, a YouTube channel um, that focuses on productivity software. Um, and what we do is we basically try and make it easy for somebody to understand a productivity tool. Because there are so many and it's just important to be able to find the right one for you and stick with it for as long as humanly possible. And I know because we talked previously, you said you reviewed have you have reviewed a lot of tools. Yeah. Say how many of them? I think I think about 600, uh, maybe a lot more than that. Um, yeah, I, I need a I need a life. <laughs> <laughs> That's impressive. And you know, how many of them really help us improve our productivity and well-being? What do you think? It's a good question because um, 
I, I always think of productivity apps like cars. So, you know, like you can get from A to B in a Ford and you can also get from A to B in a Ferrari. Um, so they come in different shapes and sizes. Um, but when sometimes we don't think about is the driver a good driver? So if they're a bad driver, if they get in a Ford or a Ferrari, they're going to be a bad driver, you know? But if you're a good driver, then you can drive it better, you know? And we sometimes forget about all of the foundational stuff we need to do in our productivity. So if you're good foundationally, if you add an app on top, you will then be more productive. So it's in, a, good to, in other words, uh, the system is the most important thing. Even better explained than me. <laughs> yes. Because, you know, so many people say that uh, some tools are very complex. We spend more time using them. Yeah. So how to choose the right one? Yeah, it's, it's a good question. I see so many people spend hours trying to, like Notion, for example, is a big one. Hours building these beautiful Notion workspaces. It takes some ages. But I, I always tend to try and approach it in three parts. Research, trial, and then optimize. So in the research phase, you spend as much time trying to match your needs to the productivity tool. The trial phase is the second phase, and you try and experiment with it for a 90 days long to try and see whether it's the right app, app for you. And then the third is optimize, and that's just about growing with the tool, making sure it's um, optimized to your industry, optimized to your job title, um, learning about how other people in your space use it. Um, to try and stay, because I always say the best distance to stay with a productivity app is three to five years, um, because it's like moving house. If you move house lots, it's stressful, isn't it? So you don't want to have to keep moving house. You want to stay with the house yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> for a little bit anyway. <laughs> and I would say uh, the most important is to know your needs, yeah. why you want to have this tool and what you want to do with this tool. Mm -hmm. 100%, yeah, needs are really important. but. People tend to, they like to see shiny apps and they go, oh, that looks nice. But in reality, you need to just go and focus yeah, on it. That's really true. So uh, how do you think uh, our use of technology affects our productivity and well-being? Um, I think it's really important. Um, I think productivity apps are, are more of a mindfulness um, tactic because what they do is they help give us structure and stability. Like for somebody that wakes up maybe that's in a bit of uh, a lot of anxiety with work and you don't have something that gives you grounding, you might wake up and feel a bit daunted. But if you wake up and you open a to-do list, you feel like there's some sort of control. So sometimes they work as a mindfulness tool to try and combat your anxiety about work. So I think it definitely should be considered like that. And also, and also to have a balance, not overuse uh, 100%, the tool. 100%, yeah. I know so many people that spend so long in productivity tools. I mean, I do it because it's my job. <laughs> but it can be quite daunting to do so many, you know. So the main conclusion would be uh, to balance your time. Yeah, yeah. You're, you're going to be very busy in the near future. <laughs> Helping people to balance your time with productivity tools. Um, because... Uh, it's only going to get more intense with artificial intelligence, so it's going to be good to help people to find their middle ground, you know. So as you reviewed so many tools, tell us and other people how we can find you. Thank you very much for having me, first of all, and you can find us over at Keep Productive on YouTube. Uh, we cover so many. Um, hopefully we find the right one for you. Thank you very much, Francesco, and have a beautiful day today. And so I have a startup on music, education, technology. So I'm creating solutions for people to learn in a more modern way to learn music. Today, the way we learn is boring, I think. <laughs> That's why the dropout in music is super high. So I'm trying to make people stick with their learning and practice and play music and maybe with that be happier. And I would like to speak with you about well-being and this fast-paced startup environment. As you yourself, as a startup founder, Owner, uh, what do you think? Is it easy to maintain well-being in this fast-paced startup environment? No, <laughs> the short question. <laughs> Actually, no, it's pretty hard. Uh, I think that's one of the biggest challenge. 
and also because there is this idea of waking up super early, working as hell, and if you do that, you're gonna be successful. Uh, so it's kind of it's 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 hard to deal with the pressure we put in ourselves when you are not working after eight in the night and say, holy shit, I should be working because that's the only way startups can drive, right? I need to be, I need to work, I need to wake up earlier. Uh, so it's pretty, it's pretty tough for me. It's pretty tough to work to work on that acceptance of no, that's this is my period of most efficiency. I'm just gonna focus in, the, in that period, and that's it. Do you mean <laughs> you have boundaries when you should work and when not? Yeah, do did I understand right? Um, not really. I don't think we should fix. Well, depend depends on each person, right? But uh, for myself, I don't like setting boundaries on time I kind of I set more more boundaries on energy so it's not that I need to start working at eight and I need to stop at six or whatever uh, but I need to stop working when I'm not productive anymore and I should be working when I'm getting good ideas and inspiration so for me myself when I wake up wake up around seven in, in the morning is the my peak of efficiency So usually it's weird, but I wake up and I go directly to work. I get a water and work, work, work. And these two hours is my peak of efficiency. efficiency. And then I stop for maybe one hour, two hours. Because I know I'm just going to do random things that is not important. So I stop. And then I feel the peak again and I go for it. So that's the way I, I do personally, right? But as a team, as a company, um, there are some boundaries that are impro important, I think. And actually... I don't know if boundaries is the word, but having things clear. Like, we know all the tasks we need to do. We know all the outcomes we're waiting, we're expecting with, from, from these tasks. So we do lose, a lot, lose, invest a lot of time in defining what we need to get from, from our time. Uh, and, and we have an idea of when it's going to be. So we think that in the next week, we can deliver these things. And that's, that's, that's all. Like it's, it's not that we need to work eight hours or whatever. It's just these are the things that we believe that with the energy we have for the week, we can deliver. Mm -hmm. So so having things clear for me is the one main thing that helps. Uh, you that. mentioned some methods uh, you use in your startup company. So can you explain a little bit more? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, we do have some things. And um, for example... I think when we are working remotely, because we work remotely, we are actually in different time zones also, um, there is this always this combination of personal level and professional level. Everywhere, always. But in remote work, this, I guess, gets more visible. And I think both things should enter into the workplace. Like, people come to work as a whole, right? As like, you're a person, a full person. So, um, we have, for example... One thing that's super efficient is the checking in a meeting. When you enter to a meeting, we have this couple of minutes to check in. Check in. So, how am I getting here now? Well, how was my morning? Am I feeling fine? Did I just had a fight with my parents or my wife or whatever? So, I do have a time to check in so people can understand how I am at that moment. So, after that, those five minutes, you really understand how people are coming to the meeting, if they're sad, if they're happy, if they're motivated, if you're, and that's fine. Sometimes people are sad and, and that's okay. So we can be more empathic and help them through all the things. But, but then there is a limit. When the checking time is finished, okay, that's work. Now, now we go to work. We know that you are in this situation, but now we're going to talk about work. And so with that, we avoid why we were talking about a roadmap, a backlog or whatever, that other conversations about personal life enters which I think there, there is a boundary. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we will talk about people, sometimes we will talk about work. We know people are behind, behind work, so we leave time to people, we leave time to work. But we try not to mix it at this, in the same conversation level. This is one thing that helps a lot. We implemented a learning time. So we have like Google, kind of like the 20% in, in Google. We have this 20% for learning. You, you can do whatever you want, but you can learn whatever you want. Uh, usually we do have a backlog about the learning, so we do have the backlog for, for the product development and we have a backlog for learning. Mm -hmm. So we know that in maybe in three months we're going to implement this AI solution for music, whatever. Uh, so we, we need to start learning about it. Or we know there is a new competitor coming or, I don't know, there's something I like in technology and music. We try to keep in the same field. 
So on Friday, we have free day only to learn, do research, exchange things between us. And this creates a general feeling of we are improving as a person. That for me is all related to my well-being because I, I need to feel that I'm learning and not just operate, operating, operating. So yeah, we do have Friday to inspire ourselves. And then on Monday, we come wanting to share what we learned. And, and that's, that generates this feeling of we're growing together. Wow, that sounds really nice. It's a good place to work, I would say. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. I do different things. So um, uh, for a while right now, for some years, I've been teaching in higher education management courses. And for even longer, <laughs> I've been uh, a coach. So I coach um, entrepreneurs, but also people who work in the corporate life who want to have more meaning in what, they're, what they have, what they do actually. So that passes by like an, an assessment or their holistic life and to see where are they in their mindset, in their heart set also, the emotional part, the health set as well, and also the soul set, no? the, their spirituality that they have and what's their why in this life. So that's, that's mainly what I do right now. I would like to, to speak with you today about the well-being and especially the impact of technology on well-being. Well, I think technology is great. It helps us, like right now, we're using technology to create this video, to like spread the message, and it's awesome. But we have to use technology for our goals and not let technology get us. Because that's one of the most dangerous things that we're having right now is that people are addicted to technology. And like sometimes we go to our phones to send a message and one hour later we're still there. It's like, oh, but I haven't even done what I wanted to do. No? So it's really helpful to be aware of it and also to create the environments that help us no? to use the technology as we decide to use it and not the other way around. It's super difficult because even us who are aware, we, we still have like this tendency to be more time using our phones, the computer and so on. Um, but already with that awareness and preparing the environments, that can help a lot. Yeah, that's great. So what would you recommend to me if I came to you and I said, oh my God, Maite, I'm so tired, I'm so exhausted and I don't want anything. <laughs> anything at all, yeah, that's it for me. What would you recommend to do? So then I would say disconnect, all right? So disconnect to reconnect again with yourself. That's what I would tell you first, like, okay. And that's what I also do sometimes when I'm like, I know I have a lot of things to do. I know that I, I wanted to, you know, I like have my to-do list and so on. But I first need to disconnect. Maybe just have like this, even it's very recommended to have one day per week when you actually, you do not use technology at all. Or like even daily, if you think like that's too hardcore for the moment, you know, like, oh, but I cannot be one full day without my phone or whatever. Just every day set a time where it's like enough. At this time, let's say at 8 p.m. or 9 p.m., I'm gonna stop using my phone and I'm gonna actually hide it. And if I remember, oh, but I have to do this and that, write it on a piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Write it on a piece of paper and then when you set the time that you're going to do it, you do it. But you do not touch the phone again because otherwise you get again in the loop and your energy is gonna be drained. I remember when I was in Geneva, well, I was living in Switzerland for some years and I remember going to this conference in the United Nations office in Geneva. And I, and I can't remember if it's them who organized it, but definitely the UN was involved, which is, it means that it's a, a big theme, no? It's something very problematic, the impact that technology is having in, in society, no? And I remember they were telling already, like, this needs to be addressed. We need to create awareness about this and we need to put the means for, not only for us as adults, but also for children, because our self-esteem is being, uh, like, affected as well the comparison, the addiction with like, I don't want to get into scientific terms right now, but there's a lot going on there that we need to be very aware of. In the university that I was working for in Switzerland, again, so also, they had put in place half an hour where we would have our pause for meditation. So we had the psychologist who was actually the psychologist for the students. He was also offering meditation to everyone for the staff and also for the students so it was our moment and that really helped me to go there and I think if I remember well it was like a once a week 
that we had that, but at least it was that. So you would be looking forward to that session of meditating, just pausing, relaxing, and also have these professionals in place that you can, mm -hmm. you know, like psychologists. Of, this is a very specific environment. It's a university with students. But I think more and more companies are having all these programs like meditation, yoga, that you teach as well. So I think that really... Yeah, every small step, meditation, yoga, uh, talk, just can help improve uh, companies' well-being and employees' well-being. So I really hope it will be our future. Thank you very much for our talk. I feel very grateful to everyone who shared their experience, tips and ideas. It was a great pleasure to touch at least a little on such important topics. I think there are two major disadvantages to our daily use of technology. Firstly, it can lead to increased dependence on technology, which can make it difficult to take breaks and rest. Secondly, we tend to be less physically active, which can impact our overall health. Both of these factors can affect our productivity and well-being. As with everything in life, balance is the most important thing. It's easier to manage when you understand both the advantages and disadvantages. Making your well-being a priority can help you improve productivity and get results faster. Let me know what you think and share your experience in the comments below. See you in the next episode.